preparing to live stream the meeting. I mean, uh, Stoney, instead of, uh, instead of fucking with the bud rod, just throw all that shit in the freezer and squish it all. Yeah, you or just uh, wash it all later. You just Surprised he didn't out. already blast it. No, you can't. Not when you got fuzz on it, guys. I mean, you, you just get your good. Can. You get your good PVC tube out. Yeah, you're just gonna get it. The oh, only I, way that I would do it, and I would probably have it be a like a edible grade, would be if you could do a water hash. Because oh, water hash would be fine. That you'd be surprised. I, Honestly, I just with water hash and butter, hash, you'd be surprised. Really? The fungus is a different size. It's a complete different size. Same thing with powdery mildew. Actually, it's a complete different size. It's smaller than the smallest micron screen. So right, just washes right saying. through, you should basically. Should be able to wash it away, but, but I'm not, not set up to be able to do it. So you're not really worried about the fungus itself. You're war- more worried about the mycotoxin that'll mm. rinse out. The right, fungus right. is like the particulate. The mycotoxin is the part that you're worried about. The fungus will bug your lungs. The mycotoxin will make you sick. Mm. I prefer not to have none of it. <laughs> How much are we talking about? Like your whole harvest, or just a little bit? Uh, it seems to be mainly the top colas, and maybe the second one down will get it, but. Uh... That was with me, like, like I said, I tried to dry it out too fast on purpose. So, it's yeah, well. ran into issues. Oh. So, what's going on, everyone? How are we doing this week? <laughs> this is uh, another week of the glorious Embracing Organic show. And we are live, yeah. by the way. What's going on, everybody in chat? So, uh, I don't really have any topics to start off the show with. Anybody have anything they want to start off with? Other than uh, we were talking about bud rot. Well, we're starting off talking about bud rot. That's a great way just to segue into a news article that I read. There is a giant grow near me. Uh, one of the largest legal outdoor commercial cultivations on the planet is in my county. And they posted a report that they had to cut down a very large portion of their crop because it was destroyed by an early frost we had here uh, about a week ago. So there will be a shortage of cannabis in this region because uh, they lost a large rise? portion. What? Colorado's going to have a shortage? Yeah. Yeah. We uh, actually crop, there's they, uh, yeah, they're a huge they're the world's largest legal outdoor cultivation. Wow. Yeah, and they reported they wow. lost millions of dollars. Wow. I mean, yeah. that won't affect us though. We don't smoke outdoor, right? Well, it'll affect everything like because market, the yeah. demand will have to, the supply will have to come from somewhere. The people that yeah. don't smoke outdoor will now smoke indoor because the outdoor is not there. So your indoor will get more expensive. Yeah, that, that was tongue in cheek, Jeff. Yes, I got you, buddy. But but still, not everybody understands that that's watching. So Jeff was just being kind to our viewers. The uh, but the prices are going to go up. Yeah, the prices will, will go up on everything. By well, the way, we don't have Tanasi, but I have a uh, flugelhorn and a chopstick. So, wait, wait, why don't you just blow, that's pretty wait, that's blow, pretty blow in the flugelhorn? Why don't you play chopsticks on the horn? Yes. <laughs> yes. You should have done. I'm not actually a flugelhornist. I just have a flugelhorn. Uh, since Tanasi is not here, I will be the guy that does the, uh, for those who are following us on YouTube, if you're in the chat, click on live chat instead of top chat, because live chat will give you a better user experience. The top chat filters out anything it feels maybe spam. So don't be spammy. Go ahead and join us in the live chat, please. Thank you, Jeff, for that. Appreciate that. And with emergency that, exits are to the left and to the right. The restrooms are to the back. <laughs> and if you need water, you're on your own because I don't have any for you. Mm-hmm. This is mine. But with that said, why don't, we, uh, why don't we all do a dab time or a bong rip or whatever we're smoking on tonight? Speaking of which, what are you guys smoking on the night? I got some more of that Wi-Fi. That uh, now I'm pretty sure I set it backwards uh, last week. It's actually <clears throat> 303 RF3. Yeah, of course. What did you say? I said RF303. Oh come on! <laughs> we knew was... exactly who you meant. Yeah, everybody. But, yeah. <laughs> but whatever. I needed to clarify that for myself because I'm pretty sure I definitely said it backwards more than once <laughs> that's right we're still proud of you well dude it got me that stone that i was saying his name backwards so it must be doing something right i'm still heating up my torch or my nails so i can tell you about what i'm dabbing i'm hitting some halo live batter from green dot labs uh it is headbanger and infinity og honestly it makes me completely fucking stupid when i smoke it i love this shit it makes me go like i need to take the short bus and need a seeing eye dog when i hit this shit like 
I need adult supervision when I smoke this. It's tremendous. That is awesome. So basically, Jeff's going to be cleaning the windows tonight with no Windex. <laughs> as soon as this nail cools down, I'm going to go full Cajun. Only the Tom Segura fans get the full Cajun joke, but if you get it, you're fucking cool. Full yeah. Cajun. That's funny. So what about the rest of you guys? Mr. Bear Grown? Mr. Fumi, what are you guys smoking on tonight? Well, I was uh, just going to smoke. Uh, sorry, Bear Girl, I just jumped all over you. I was just going to smoke some cluster fuckies because today was kind of a cluster fuck of a day in a funny way. But uh, I actually had a bunch of weed in my grinder, which is like a first floor problem. You know, like when you already have weed ground up in your grinder, you're like, well, fuck yeah. So that's how I feel right now. So anyway, that's, I don't even remember what it is, but uh, fuck yeah. On to you, Bear. Sorry, buddy. Very weed. Uh, I've got nothing too exciting. Um, just a solid uh, cone that um, somebody was kind enough to leave down here. <coughs> Stony. <coughs> <laughs> my next? Okay. <laughs> oh, well, my dad's biting me a little bit, but uh, I believe that I'm smoking the last of the Mohicans on some third dimension times mk5 that i made it's a really greasy cultivar that makes excellent concentrates but i'm almost out so that's a bummer it's always a bummer when you're almost out of something that you really love and you know it's not going to be around for a while yeah i have the mother plant but you know you figure veg time plus flower you know you're three months from ever tasting that if you just have the mother how do you guys how do you guys deal with that actually? That's a good question. Uh what going without your, your favorite strain? Uh dude, it's uh for example, a new keeper or whatever. Me? I don't I don't know. I try to change it up all the time. I get bored really easily. Hmm. So I don't necessarily have that problem. Got it. I've got test growers that are always giving me flowers, so I'm overloaded. I give flowers away. That's been nice. And the dispensary is that way, that way, and that way. So if all else fails. Uh, yeah, because every I time know, we I'm talk really... to Jeff, he's always got something from a dispensary in his hand. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Fumi. That's true. Oh, I was just going to say I'm picky. That's why it was, wasn't really that special. I was just going to say, like, I'm um, – I don't even know really what I was going to say at some point, but uh, I get sick of flavors really fast. I'm really picky. I don't know. Moving on to somebody else. I think I was in between, like, two thoughts. Go for it, guys. I might be the opposite. I think I really fall in love with the flavor and want to just keep it because like, then I know what to expect. I know exactly how big of a dab I want. I know how many dabs I want. Mm. It's like just knowing it's like that comfort. It's like a blanket, like two dabs of this. And I'm going to be like, I know this one makes me full Cajun. Like, I can't remember what the fuck I'm trying to say as I'm saying it, but I enjoy that. Uh, this one is what does that. I've got others that make me ramble nonstop. I got some that make me go full silent and I like just knowing what to expect from it. Isn't that magical about weed? I mean, I, know, I don't know of anything else that really functions the same way. I certainly don't think that wine functions that way. Uh, coffee, as much as I love coffee, too, it doesn't work that way. Like, coffee just kind of all feels about the same. It tastes different. But with weed, I mean, you can really plan your day if you want. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. you know enough about weed and you've got good enough weed. It's legal in your area. So you have access to good growers and good processors, producers, that whole chain, right? And then you get to basically, like, select your day's menu of hash. How beautiful is that, right? And that's, I mean, most of our audience have never gotten to do that. They have right. maybe one weed and they have to smoke it quietly and they have to make sure no one smells it and blah, blah, blah. You know, so yeah. there's an Eden out there for you guys. You know, there's we get to, to smoke to. lemon Jeffrey in the morning or jelly bean in the morning, get some orange or yeah. lemon terps happening. Exactly. Not too, not too potent, but still a little waker. You know what I mean? Get your brain moving, yeah. get you creative. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to leave the house. I don't want to go talk to people. I know I seem social. That's because I've had some dabs. Uh, when I start my day, I'm like, oh, there's people outside. Smoke a little Lemon Jeffrey, and I'm like, let's go see the people. Let's go meet my friends, and I'm just in a good mood and shit. By lunchtime, I'm not buzzed anymore. Smoke a little something heavier sativa to get my brain going, wake me back up. And then in the evening, you got that heavy indica, whatever you choose, you know, chill yourself out. Yeah, we can medicate perfectly all day. Mm-hmm. I may be crazy. I've got a theory that I've never said out loud anywhere, and I should put it out on a recording somewhere so people can hear me. I think that in the future we'll be able to, we'll have like a card or something with our input, our data on there. And we will pull up to the dispensary, whatever it is in the future. And you hand them your card and they will spit out a custom tailored concentrate that is just for your little, it's basically your prescription. And it's 17% mercine, 32% terpenaline, 
84% THCA, 3% CBD, but we've all got our own little thing and they've just got like a little slurpy machine in the back and they're mixing up suicides for you. Like two squirts of Dr. Pepper, one squirt of Coke and some lemon iced tea. And that's what, what you do, what you really like. And then I just want a whole bunch of Dr. Pepper with some cherry Coke in there. And we would be able, I think we'll all be able to go get our own custom tailored medical cannabinoid terpene mixture. It'll be way different than what it is, but it'll be really similar. It'll look just like this. You know, it'll be the same looking concentrate but it'll be custom for me and custom for you. Uh, that comes out of, I'm thinking like a suicide machine. Like when you just used to go to the pizza place and mix up all the Cokes, I think it'll be similar to that, but there's a guy that'll it's do in, it for you. It's intriguing when you say that because like in the process of developing the market and developing people's tastes and even uh, 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 tailoring it better for the customer, you're almost going to remove the social component because that weed is going to be for Jeff and not for Stabby and not for Dan. And, I, and they might even find that disgusting for some reason. <clears throat> Very true. Uh, I don't want to smoke a lot of people's CBD stuff. CBD ruins my high. I'm smoking to get high. Uh, CBD brings my high down. So I avoid, if you've got, if you're like, I've got a CBD pen, I stay away from you all night. Don't fuck up my high. Uh, and you're absolutely right. We all have all got these pens. Everybody in Colorado has got a pen and we don't pass them around. We don't share them because the next guy's already got one. So it is kind of ruining that social pass the joint, pass the bowl and be friendly. The dabs kind of did that too. Cause you heat a dab and it takes so much time that there's no, community to it we're all just dabbing out and being dad but the pins do well, kind of you guys also started the dab bar though that's yeah. like a that's a total colorado thing dude you go outside of colorado and you tell somebody yo where's the dab bar at they're like oh what the what don't say that out loud bro mm. <laughs> they're like dude uh, i think with electronic nails i think with an e-nail you can you can sit down with four or five people and because you don't have to keep re um, heating it up you can kind of pass the dab the dab rig around with with the concentrate and everybody Very true on, you know it can be more social it really depends on what your equipment is. isn't there something to the ritual though of rolling up a joint or packing up a bowl that you and and i think part of it uh and i i could be very wrong on this part of it is a spiritual thing two i want and i'm gonna i'm gonna try not to sound racist or whatever but two tribes meet together two clans two groups meet together you've got one part of the pipe i've got another part we unite that then we put some locally grown herbs into there and we smoke it together and we both smoke that. So we know, Hey, you're fucked up. I'm fucked up. I didn't just give you poison. You didn't just give me poison. We're both seeing fucking God right now. And then we bond over that. That's part of what it used to be. We would, two people would bring two parts of a pipe together and unite the pipe. That way we're uniting and smoking together. And we've totally taken that ritual out. We've, we don't even care about that anymore. We're smoking online now. We can't even fucking touch each other. And in the huh? same way, the social component of like passing the joint was almost a way of sharing the crime, right? Like you actually, you're commiserating in the crime. So we're all going to get busted. So I can trust you because, you know, you're cool. You pass the joint. Yep. You smell just yeah. as bad as I do. I saw you, you do it. Yep. Cheers, Tara. Hey, Welcome, Tara. Tara. Sure. Well, I hope you're wrong, Jeff. Well, if you're, um, I guess if you're right, I hope that they just, uh, for me anyway, with my weed selections, know what my general preferences are and what to stay away from <laughs> but then just hit the random because <laughs> i personally am a fan weed of the seat belt method of smoking weed i don't want to know if it's morning weed or nighttime weed or sleepy weed i smoke the weed and i fasten my seat belt and i see what happens that's for me that's part of the experience. That's it? always, that'll always be available. I, I would assume. I mean, you can go to the dispenser and be like, give me a jar of that, whatever, that dog fighter OG, and then just go home and smoke it. But you'll also be able to get, if you're, imagine all the sick people that have a specific problem, you know what I mean? A seizure patient, a cancer patient that knows that this much terpenaline and this much mercy and fucking makes my pain go away. They can just go get that slurry every time they go to the store. You're like, here you go. And the machine goes, burr, 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 and mixes it up for you. It's all homogenous. And you go home and dab it perfectly. That'd be so rad for sick people. See, like that that's cool and all, but me personally, I kind of like the adventure of like, ooh, what's this strain gonna do? What's this strain gonna do? I like I kind of like the adventure of you don't have a hundred you don't have a hundred seizures a day that we're trying to stop you from having. So it's I understand both aspects. I understand both aspects. There would probably be like a recreational aspect to the same kind of technology where recreational patients would get recreational suggestions medical patients would get medicine you just triggered a new thought process with the same technology we could reverse engineer every strain if your favorite strain is blue dream we'll spit it out for you because we've grown a thousand samples of blue dream we have figured out the terp profile the cannabinoid profile we've got a close enough replication 
You can order any strain you want because we've got all the ingredients now in our little Slurpee machine. I'm just being fun with the future yeah, of cannabis, well, you guys. I don't know that this that will a, happen. It's, it's I'm just being the Jetsons. Fun. It's not necessarily fun. I think that was one of the things that Phylos was essentially accused of was that uh, they were assembling all the, the the proprietary information of cannabis so that they could basically cross-reference any strain against it, it, itself and potentially claim ownership down the line, but also use all of those markers to breed with. So essentially they would own those by the back door, right? And there's probably other organizations that we haven't even talked about. So people are doing that kind of stuff to this day for right. both good and bad reasons, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Imagine if we could just go in and say, you've got like a, a menu of a hundred strains or whatever, and they're always there and you can get that concentrate every time. Give me a gram of sour diesel, a gram of blue dream. And I want that old Brazilian funky, whatever that's been brought back, you know, you can get whatever. You just make all kinds of weird combinations. I just at the same time, I'm curious. I don't. I don't mean to presume, but a lot of times, people who are vegan or you do the the whole whole foods plant diet or whatever are kind of horrified by the concept of processed foods. So, how is a processed food any different from a processed cannabis? And what I mean by that is, uh, what it, what about the people who say, no, 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 I need organic milk, I need organic cashews, and I want organic cannabis that was squished on a press <laughs> or even like not even handled by people, not processed. I want the real thing. You know, that's a whole market too, right? Absolutely. And that's there Jeff's for them. Over there seeing stars. No, there was a moth that just flew out of nowhere. I don't know where it came from. There really was a moth. You can see the shadow, I hope. I hope other people well, see that. It exists. You know, that, that can go with in, in hand with what you're talking about, Fumador. Um, with this this company that was just south of us, me, between us and Yakima that got busted, they were making salad mixes. Did you hear about that? In Yakima. So in Yakima, they were completely approved. It was completely approved by the U.S. USDA, they had license and everything, and our wonderful, I don't even, the county in Yakima, I don't even know who actually did it, but they actually went in and served them with papers and broke doors and confiscated shit. Yeah. And it was a legal hemp grow. Like, it was not cannabis. Like, they didn't even do their, their due diligence and do their background checks or nothing, and they busted oh, yeah. these people. Yeah, that farms. happens too, for sure. You know, wow. and those, and that's, and that's, you know, that's something that's there. They were using it to use for salads, you know? So you talk about, you know, that's what someone's looking for fresh consumption. They didn't want it altered. Right. Oh, like, uh, like a, a hemp infused salad dressings or something, or even just hemp. No, oil, it's actually salad that they were using. Like CBD. The hemp seed for I hemp oil. CBD salad leaves. The actual leaves themselves. They were going to use them as salad leaves. I think fresh that's greens. what they were. Yeah. I think they were actually going that approach. Which is so dumb because I mean, there's there's so little medicinal compound. Like, I mean, I'm not saying that the leaves are useless. I'm saying like to arrest someone over that is just so stupid. It, it may be dumb on the consumer end, but on the marketer end, boy, they're making yeah. some fucking money and they're brilliant. Look, there's that oh. moth. Did you see it? Did anybody see it? It exists. I'm really not tripping. Dude, you're tripping. <laughs> it's real. You're that's tripping. Uh, that's some good dabs, man. I got to go over Jeff's house. Come on yeah, over, bro. Shit. Right? Get you a booster seat and give you a big old dab. Yes. Can Can't you combine wait. those with Keith's bunnies? Pull that would, that seems like a really chair. fun evening. Moth bunnies. Jeff bunnies that just moths, fly into the Keith light. Seeing bunnies. Listen, you're tall enough. You could just stand up and <clears> grab <throat> it. No, they're quick, bro. They're gross. They're disgusting. They're all dusty. The future of cannabis, you guys. A little slurpy machine spitting out. Yes. Perfectly mixed. So you put in a little card, like an ATM card, and a little thing comes out. Bloop. No I'm people involved. I mean, it's, it's, it's a, a no-brainer for it's a no-brainer for. I saw it. Stuff. He's right. attacking yeah. you. It's harassing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's the ghost of like yeah. it's the ghost of wool sweaters past or something. That's fucking funny. <laughs> I feel like so, it's Bear Ground's been awfully quiet tonight. What are you? What are we looking at over there, Mister Bear Ground? Um, it's a uh, veg bed that we currently have some autos in. Okay um never ran autos before so i decided to give them a try while i was in the end in between spot waiting for some clones to grow up big enough and um so that is going to be a mom bed at some point where it'll hold quite a few different moms in it but uh right now it has a lot of cover crop and a few small autos okay cool cool i like what i see keeping it organic trying definitely and then fumador is rocking that uh awesome background it looks like he's got giant butts behind him right giant. 
Wouldn't that be awesome if they were that big? Break one I mean, off. That'd be a pretty big, that pretty big risk for a bud rot. But wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, I, I grew some white rhinos somewhere. that were that size and Couldn't all up the middle, big. just moldy. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Is that why it's called white rhino? Then? Yeah, because it's all moldy up the middle. <laughs> it's delicious. White rhino is delicious. Holy crap! Yeah, when it's done right, I didn't do it right. I fucked it all up. Hey it's man, you gotta fuck it up to get it, it right, inside. right? It was a learning experience. Right. They looked real good on uh, Instagram. Those buds looked really nice, but we had to throw all of the. Pl- I just, I'm not like some people where I'll pick through and be like, some of these buds are moldy. I'm like, no, this plant sucks. <laughs> Trash. Goodbye. I'm lazy. Like, yeah, they went in the dumpster. Yeah, it's a safe move. Different lives. So what do you guys think? I mean, the, the weed slurpy machine, like a lot of people assume that automated machines of all kinds, you know, that specified like, uh, what am I trying to say? The custom tailored machines that you can walk up, put cash in, you get something out of. They always say that that's going to take over the world. Every single thing that's going to take over the world. A while ago, there were Bitcoin vending machines. <laughs> well, so now on a different concept, there's going to be custom tailored well, weed. It all makes I could sense, say is, uh, but Jeff, it's also horrifying on some level. Jeff, copyright, hash, copyright or hashtag or whatever you got to do, fucking weed slurpee. Weed slurpee. Start using it now. Yep. Weedslurpee.com. <clears throat> Jeff did it first. Weed Slurpee. It's funny. I don't want to use the word Slurpee. That might get at Yeah, that's true. Slurry. That's the new, that's the word. <laughs> cannabis, <laughs> cannabis Italian ice. <laughs> no, now other people are just stealing URLs right now. Domain names are just being snatched up. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> I think I've been saying Terpy Slurpee for about 20 years, to tell you the truth. The Terpy Slurpee? Terpy Slurpee. That's what we've been saying. That'd be interesting. I just want it to happen. Bring on our custom tailored medicine. Make people feel better. And then again, the custom uh, medicine, you know, when you talk about something like that, it's a perfect entree for gigantic uh, companies to come in and just produce vats of THC and CBD and this terpene and that terpene, as opposed to anything approaching real cannabis. So, for example, if you do have that weed slurpee, you're probably not going to be heavy. It's probably not going to be weed slurpee by Bob the Farmer or it's going to be Bob the Farmer TM and it's actually going to be owned by Marlboro. <laughs> be seven different farms probably growing one farm growing for I mean, thc cool. one grown for cbd another farm grown for terps i don't know uh you hear uh kevin talks about kevin jodry would talk about a lot of farms outdoors they extract and bring the crude and then at the indoor farms they extract from them and bring the terps uh mm-hmm. because it's better it's easier to extract and bring the terps from the indoor farms so we'll probably see situations like that mm-hmm. that's just something i remember hearing him talk about Plays into my thought process. Super Nord's comment in the chat. (laughs) I'm too stoned to keep up with the goddamn chat today. Oh, dude, (laughs) yeah, they're they're freaking hilarious in chat tonight. (laughs) I figure that that a Slurpee machine for the THC will probably be on par with getting coffee from a vending machine, like a K cup. Yeah, pop pop that. We go down to the local Seven Ten shop and get your uh, Terpy Slurpee and. Yep. And then you can hop over to 7 Eleven and get some munchies. I was going to say, maybe they'll just pour your fucking Turpy Slurpee into your Starbucks so you can just fucking whip it all up in one move and get caffeinated and medicated. And maybe they'll fucking tug me out on the way out and be fucking beautiful. Tara looks like she's caught in a windstorm. <laughs> it's just her rock star vibes, bro. Wherever yeah, she see, goes, her I hair have just the fucking flows going on like right that. Now. I got the full studio thing going on, guys. <laughs> she's got theme music behind her and shit. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Is that a fan da, da, da. Actually, I'm super hot. I turned the fucking fan on, all right? <laughs> yeah, we didn't curse at all this entire show until Tara got here. So you guys cannot say Tara. Sure. You guys cannot say Tara cleans up the show. <laughs> Tara's got just as bad as mouth as the rest of us. Filthy, filthy, dirty mouth. <laughs> you dirty sailor, you. <laughs> you guys bring it out in me. What can I say? <laughs> It's after late night, right? It's late night hour. We can. Oh, Tara, how'd the crop go? Or are you still working on the outdoor? Oh, you know, my crop definitely shows that I played this year. Yep. That's okay, though. You know, I had an amazing year. When I look back at all the shit I've done and all the traveling I've done, I wouldn't take it back a minute for more time in the garden. So next year, I will go and put a lot of these things I learned this year a little bit more to work. Mm. This year, I really slacked in the garden. So, but that's okay. Um, 
my garden, it's harvested, right? It's in, it's hanging. It's uh, probably should be getting ready to go into buckets right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take off and go, here I go again, off to Tri-Cities this weekend. I'm going to go down to the Hemp Expo and Health Expo. There again, I'm letting my crop probably dry a little bit longer than it should, but I'm going to go have some more fun. And um, it's just more important to me this year is really traveling and meeting people and getting out in the community and, and it shows in my grow. That's all. So is that the lesson? Like, was it uh, that you pursued something that was more rewarding to you than growing and that was just uh, a better use of your time? Because weed isn't really that yeah. expensive for you, right? So like, you don't have well, to grow necessarily. You, um, you know, time is really valuable to me at this point. You know, unfortunately, when you have, you know, certain things that happen in your life, you become, you know, like certain things are less important to you than making friendships or building relationships and like there's always next year for the garden, right? And then like this year is building those relationships and going to Hemp Fest for my first time and going to go to my first cup at the end in October or in uh, December for Emerald Cup and, you know, getting out to Ollie's and meeting you guys, going down and seeing you and you and I hanging up at, at the Cultivation Classic and and going to all these things are just, God, I, I just <clears throat> would not have traded it for any minute in the garden this year. I really wouldn't. I, I've had an amazing time this year. That's all I can say. And, and so my, my garden shows it, you know, because I didn't, my plants aren't as big. I probably, you know, I didn't prune as much as I should. And I, you know, like there's just all these little things that you learn. And then all this KNF stuff that I learned. Oh my God, I can't wait to put it to use next year. Really. Yeah, people, uh, people often assume that folks are static and that they don't change. And oh, Tara Lee is Tara Lee and Dan is Dan. But man, people change from year to year. A year ago, Dan was a renter. Now Dan is a homeowner. A year from now, who knows what Dan will be. Dan might be an astronaut. Yeah. Jeff might decide that he's going to be the new Rastafari. What, whatever, right? Like people can change and people do change. And uh, it's just interesting to see if you fight that or embrace it, if it's a positive thing in your life. And you, not everyone is a gardener, right? Not everyone has to be a gardener, for example. Mm -hmm. Maybe something's better. Maybe something's more rewarding. You can always come back to the garden. That kind of yeah. stuff's important, too. Yeah. It's just about balance, you know? And I just found that, you know, I'm just really finding balance again. I'm really trying to find where all that, where, where I lie, you know, where I want to be happy. You know, I find that everybody's in such a rush rush these days to make all this money and, and try and do all this stuff. And it's, it's just, that's not important to me anymore. You know, there's just, there's more to life to be happy and not to try and keep up with the Joneses and just be happy and be happy with what I want to do and, and live my life for me and not try and live it for everybody else. That's just really what I'm learning this year. Good to hear. If you just do the right things and don't stress over stuff, the money and the funding will all come and just do things the right way. You don't have to chase the dollar so much. Mm -hmm. People see the dollar chase and it's gross, so they don't want to give you dollars. If you just live and be all right, the dollars will fall all over you. Well, and even if they don't, you know, it's just like, it's, it's like the intent is just, it's so much better than who knows what it could be. Right. You know, you just feel, you just feel better about it. <clears throat> And I'm definitely passionate about growing, um, but this year didn't show it. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, you know, you can be passionate about growing from a distance, right? You can be passionate about all kinds of things. There are people who are passionate about painting who are not painters. You know, they might be art collectors and they might run museums or they might run art galleries. There's an entire industry of people now that weed is becoming legal. There's an entire industry of people who are still interested in growing but don't have to have their hands in the dirt or don't want to, or don't need to, or whatever the case may be, right? Maybe they do something different that is just as equally important, right? Well, the, you know? the old saying, right? Those who, you know, can't do teach. Maybe Tara doesn't want to get her fingernails dirty, but it doesn't mean she- Are you saying she that can't, Tara can't do oh, yeah, I, 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 I never, so pretty no, fingernails. What I'm, <laughs> I'm saying is like, maybe she doesn't necessarily want to do the dirty work, but she still wants to be involved so she can teach people. It's still helping. It's still doing something. I, I think you've completely uh, misinterpreted that saying. <laughs> It's a slam against people. That yes, I, I know what it really means, but I'm, I'm trying to be positive about it. <laughs> They're yeah, saying if you, could really, if you could really do yeah. the shit, you'd be out doing it, not teaching it. But we get what you're saying. Oh, and I don't want to be like a, I'm psychic or anything, but I have a strong prediction that I know what Dan will be doing next year. What? What is it? If he's lucky, he might be able to harvest that Michelangelo finally. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's funny because I'm not even growing Michelangelo. Oh, wrong snap. turtle. Uh, wrong turtle. That's fucking the best answer. Wrong turtle. Right. Wrong turtle. Wrong turtle. I thought it was the Michelangelo. What do you know that you've it's been touching for five months? It's the Raphael. Oh, the and Raphael. speaking of which, we're actually on day 11 of flower here. So. Yeah. Well, you're locked in now. I mean, it's just a matter of time. Yeah, that, pretty that much. Is a little excessive for a two by two. I don't even know how you keep it in there under. Man, you uh, you cannot stop making fun of poor dad. Either no, it's too I mean, small that's, or it's too big or it's too that. I'm just saying that, that, doesn't that, that, that doesn't look too bad. That doesn't I look too terrible. I don't think I can veg a plant in a two by two for five months. I don't think I've got the patience. Well, Not clearly. everyone does, man. Not everyone is a Zen master of the uh, two by two worm farm. Yep. The the two by two worm do. farm. I like the sound of that. But yeah, I mean, Raphael's looking pretty good. I got some uh, some clones saved of her. So hopefully if uh, if she turns out as good as she looks, I'll maybe run it again. Because like Jeff was saying in maybe last episode or a week or two before that, she's going to just stack up with colas. So looking forward to that. Awesome. Also, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely. I would definitely say I'm not an indoor grower. Do you? Why do you say that? Just because you don't like? Because I know you've been growing outdoors. Do you just not have any interest in the indoor growing at all this year? Um, I just really have not even. I tried it like a couple years ago. I had some plants in here that I that I was uh, just kept over the winter, and then ended up. I dealt with thrips. I dealt with. Uh, um, I think I had a little bit of spider mites, but then it was just in time to put them out in the spring. So then they, you know, cleared up. And I just, I feel like I want to be more of, I, I want to chase that regenerative path where I already have the beneficials in my garden and I do all that. I don't want to be as sterile. I feel like you guys in, inside is just, you're so much more sterile and clean. And, and honestly, so my garden like, is that sterile. Yeah, there ain't nothing sterile really? about this, Tara. Uh-uh, <laughs> sweetheart. There's Everybody bug, that there's... I have seen is like so clean and so sterile in their tents. It's well, there's a difference crazy. between cleanliness and sterility. I can thing. I can put the camera down. I don't know how well you'd be able to see it, but there are bugs crawling all under my mulch layer. Yeah, well, yeah I, I, they just, you guys they just, have done organic. You guys have done the organic thing, right? So that's yeah, what you're chasing, they just, right? Right. The bug, they just stay there because that's where they're happy. They don't venture out. You don't find them crawling around in the room anywhere. They stay where they're at because I, I give them the, the proper environment that they want. Yeah, see, that's so a it, sterile it, environment. Clean like that's hospital. Think, yeah. yeah. I think it depends on your interpretation. Like, for example, the Amazon floor or a forest floor is not clean in the sense that if you laid down on it with like white clothing you'd get up dirty but if you were to let's say roll around on it you would never get sick i think honestly on some level you'd probably heal if you know if you had anything on your skin you'd get like lactobacillus on it they would probably heal it but in other words it's not dirty it's in my opinion clean on some sense but it's definitely not sterile it's completely covered in microbiology i think in the same way dan's mine any organic land and air probably or a uh, bear grown any organic good organic grow is not sterile anyway but it's also necessarily not dirty it's uh it's i, I you can't really call it clean or dirty because it's like in the pot i mean it's soil you know what i mean so I don't know. yeah i guess that makes sense when you guys put it that way i guess i never really thought about it that way but I do know people that are super sterile, right? Those the the more like the hydroponic growers or well, like PWC the... primarily. You have to nothing. Have everything soup. nothing crawls in my bedrooms. Nothing yeah. crawls in my. <laughs> See, nothing and is crawling. There is that, and that's what I guess what I really <laughs> picture the indoor being like, and that's what. I like to see that you guys doing this. Like Joshua Stingland was one of the first people I followed. That was kind of the no-till thing that I was first introduced to. And um, that you guys are, I see obviously you guys are all into that too. And, and so I, I kind of forget that, that you guys are in that direction because I don't always look at your stuff. So yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I'm the soulless sterile one in here. You're the sterile guy. One of these days, you got to come to the Portland Cannabis Tasting Society, Jeff. You got to bring some of that weed and see if it holds up to the freaking Terps, man. I'm in. I'm in. I think you guys will approve. I hope so. Man, I'm trying to keep up with the here. chat, but <laughs> there's a lot going on. I know. I'm trying to read it and like talk and like, yeah. my damn camera. Cheers. How's everybody doing tonight? 
Awesome. I owe MedFit an apology. MedFit's been trying to message me, but honestly, I get overloaded with messages. MedFit, I'll come hold your hand and dab with you this weekend. Don't worry, little buddy. We'll come. I'll come say hello. MedFit's in my neighborhood, and I haven't responded to him, so I'm a piece of shit friend. But I'll go out there and get him so stoned he forgets. Oh no! Cool. Dab his ass out. I will. I will. <laughs> Speaking of which, it's dead time. <laughs> ding ding ding. Ding ding ding. Hadley ho. Where's our friend Tanasi tonight? Tanasi is uh, crabs. Yeah, he's at an all you can eat crab. <laughs> no, Tanasi's at an all you can eat crab night. So uh he could not make the show. And I mean honestly I can't blame him. I, I would go to an all you can eat crab night instead of coming here. I think it was also somebody's birthday. So happy birthday to that person, but they shall yes. remain a nanny mouse. Happy birthday, happy birthday. So Tanasi took somebody to Get them crabs. That's or Tanasi's sure. getting crabs from somebody. <laughs> no, but they're all Tenasi's you can eat with crabs somebody. with it's like a family somebody. Fair, man. Yeah, yeah Tanasi and his friend went to go get crabs. It's a hell of a birthday if you get crabs. I definitely, definitely just wanted to like tell crab. people about. 40th birthday, and all I got were these crabs. It's a good shirt. How old is Tanasi anyway? Like 140? He seems like a vampire, maybe. I don't know how old his girlfriend is, but he gets all that, that fungus that keeps him young. Oh, no. He's not an old... He's got an old soul, but... Uh, he's, no, he's not he has, that old. He's not that old. I'm over here fighting with a leg cramp right now, so uh, don't mind me. <laughs> and the chat, someone said, try dabbing crabs. So you know what? Uh, I was just thinking. So, um, oops, go, go ahead. For it, go for it, Tara. Well, I was gonna go say. So should we analyze Dan? He's got a leg cramp. He's not having enough bananas, eating enough potassium, drinking enough water. What I'm the not, hell is it? I'm not drinking enough water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about How the bananas? Can you not drink enough water when you smoke, guys? I drink so much water because of the cotton mouth. Like that is one thing I have never gotten used to. Well, I also. Uh, I'm also like a tractor trailer repair guy, so I have to drink water all day long. It kind of gets a little redundant after oh, a while. I know I get bored of it. I get hey, so bored of it. Hey, there's a topic. Let's go yeah. around and tell everybody what is your best cure for cotton mouth. That might be <laughs> a good topic. Because okay, what is it? Sure has their. I, I sure? like that. Oh. Yes, let's no, go with sure? this. Go for it. Sure idea. Okay. Okay. So my best cure all, and this is back from allegedly high school days, but I still think it holds. You go to the gas station over on the side by the teas. You get the Lipton sweetened iced tea. It's got like a blue label on it. That bad boy will knock cotton mouth right out. Risk. Well, I mean, I guess if you like a different brand or whatever, but I always was able to get the Lipton and it's got to be the sweetened. I don't, without the sugar in there, it doesn't like fix the problem so for me anyway it's got to be the sweetened iced tea ice cold and that tends to help so um i'm actually a fan of whole milk dude okay. i'm telling you a cold glass of whole milk will completely knock out cotton mouth it gives okay. me like the, the, oil. the i love like the, okay. the yellow yes. mucus I love the whole milk and I can drink all that, but I can't dab anymore after that because of the coughing. This, that, that's the Fleming part afterwards is what you're saying. Yeah. When that's you guys hear my throat all funky on a podcast, it's because I've had too much coffee with too much milk in it. I had a Frappuccino or something that has got me like. Blah, blah, blah. Really? See, yep, that's the dude, iced coffee that does that. I Guys, I drink milk like it's going out of style. Like, I'm to. not kidding. We buy like two gallons every time we go food shopping and it's all for me. But you're also uh, probably quite a bit more physically active than I. So dude. for me, it just builds up as mucus. For you, you burn it off as fat. Oh, uh, dude, I yeah, I burn it off like crazy. So I get a, I get a belly ache and I fart and then I just don't feel good. Yeah, I mean, milk and I aren't friends. All right, well then, what do you use, Jeff? Can't just tell us what <laughs> doesn't work. The old DP, huh? The old Dr. Pepper. That's like the, he said a frosty deep cold deep. Dr. Pepper. And then I've always got a bottle of water next to me. I drink a lot of water. Uh, I'm 6'5", about 200 pounds. I probably drink 
Uh, I've got a glass that I keep filled around the house all the time. I drink probably seven of those and then probably three or four of these a day. So I do all right on water, I think. And then if I play the drums, I got, I'll slam one of those after I beat the drums. So it probably yeah, puts me about. I'm sorry. I had a curiosity because you were quoting height and weight. And I know you do that a lot. Do you step on the scale and subtract the dread weight or is that just <laughs> dreads and all? Uh, that's dreads, dreads and all. Bro. I'm okay, guessing the see? dreads. These dreads probably, I'm guessing, about seven pounds. I used to work at a bowling alley. They feel like I'm holding a six-pound bowling ball. It's really similar to that weight. Okay. Yeah, and I'm not exaggerating. It feels, it feels, it's the same size. It's got the same like. I can, it just feels similar. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm just saying that's like wearing like steel-toed uh, lumberjack boots and then not subtracting for it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm just curious, strong. just curious. It was just a question because I know you're always. Quote, would you like my away. blood? Would you like my blood type, sir? No, mm -hmm. but if you uh, wanna... C por favor. <laughs> it's THC. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. Here, Tara, are you are you happy now? Do we get to watch you eat the banana? I mean, I think oh, it would be appropriate. Tara <laughs> blushed immediately. <laughs> wow. Yeah, let's put him on screen share and let him share with the whole chat. Let's move this over to it. Patreon now. Do it. Ladies Do and gentlemen, oh, patreon.com slash embracing organics. Watch Dan eat a banana. <laughs> we don't have a Patreon <laughs> set up yet. Chat, the folks in the chat, let's encourage Dan to set up a Patreon. He doesn't want to because he doesn't want to make money off the show, but he puts time and energy into it and he's paying for the Zoom feed, which costs money. Uh, so I think we should help him out with a Patreon channel. I think you should create a Patreon that takes... Personally, takes funds and then directly pays for that zoom feed and then also pays for like new microphones and whatever your internet bill costs that should be covered for you you're helping us out by doing a show so here personally my thought is if you set it up it's their choice just don't push it in everybody's face then it's their yeah. vote if they want to support you you know it doesn't matter it doesn't it, there you go raptor gross said look into the camera <laughs> oh Oh, um, you gotta screen share that bitch. Here. Getting that member only content. That for should be our new uh, our new thumbnail. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. At least for this episode. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that. Uh, Dan, YouTube do it again. One more. Picking. Dan, do it again. Come on, Dan. No. <laughs> he said no. I got oh, shy man. suddenly. Zach, come on. <laughs> totally gonna screen share you. No, but uh, Landon Air had a a good comment. Uh, he said, who's ready for some late season varieties to come down outside and in grow houses or greenhouses? I'm sorry. Uh, I wish. I wish I wasn't done. Everybody's on struggle mode out here in Colorado. It got cold recently. We got snow. If you uh, watch the Dude Grow Show, you saw that Scotty Real had like a foot and a half of snow in his backyard recently. We're getting pummeled. Like I said at the start of the show, there's an outdoor uh, facility that lost millions of dollars in products. So everyone here is scrambling. We're, they're just trying to take it down. If it's not coming down, they're out there with a the tarp over it and some heaters on it. There, so people we choose earlier flowering shit here, or at least we try. I think a lot of people got burned up here. I've been hearing from quite a few people who got butter at home growers and commercial boat. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, you guys got butter out. We got too. frozen. Yeah, <clears throat> and then California got burned down. Well, I, I even with my indoor grow. I've noticed, I think I was down in my flower today and it was 77 degrees and under LEDs, I'm thinking, man, I really don't want to have to run heat this early, but that's really cooler than I like to run my flower. So, you know, Time for another light. Why have a heater? Have just another light. Yep. That helps during the day. Run Home them alternately, light. my friend. Homie, put the uh, put them in tents, or if you have a one environment, put another tent and run that in the off time, so that basically at least all day long there's at least a 600 watt heater running. For example, you know, 600 watt CMH would be like a 600 watt heater, basically. Over here watching chat and Stabby's just kind of <laughs> stabbing me. Like, come on, do it, do it. Do I have it. too many screens. It's hard. Hey, so I wasn't running when you mentioned Kevin Jodry. By the way, I really like Kevin Jodry. No, I was just joking when I said that. Oh, okay. I'm like, I oh. said Kevin, and you got up and took off, and I was like, there she oh, goes. No, I turned the fan on. That was like, yeah, I was like, Kevin's by the way, awesome. I really oh, like Kevin. See? No, so she um, really likes Kevin, so she had to turn a fan on. I, yeah, That's how much. <laughs> he got me all hot and bothered. He does it to me too. It's okay. Yeah, you know what can I say? <laughs> no, uh, actually, um, I got good news. Dragonfly Earth Medicine is going to be on my channel next week on Tuesday night. Awesome. 
with, that sounds uh, like it should be a good show. Blooms. Yes, I'm so looking forward to that. Oh my gosh, I'm stoked. Amazing news. And Dan, when are you going to come on my show? And all you guys, like, I just had Jeff on. Like, what yeah. the hell? A good time. Spontaneous. It was spontaneous. Yeah, it was. I was in I'm chat. Like, Dude, right now. I know. Thanks for being there in chat. I was like, oh, what? Recording. Now? Thank okay. You. Well, I yeah, watched I it after the fact. I mean, that's fine. I appreciate it. Dude, I'm fine if you're not there live. Honestly, like, I'm not guilting everybody into it. I just, like, I appreciate everybody when they do support. And, like, I don't expect people to be there, like, nonstop. Like, people have lives. I totally get it. Like, I'm not one of those people, I guess. All right, what were we talking about? Oh, we were talking about oh, cotton no, mouth thing. I'm sorry, we're talking about cotton mouth thing. What was the cotton mouth thing? Yeah, cotton mouth killers. What's your favorite cotton mouth killer? Milk, milk was not it. No, that's mine, but for me, yeah. I'm proud uh, of myself for censoring my answer too. Well, what's yours, Tara? Well, I, obviously it's still water because that's it, but it doesn't really work. I kind of think like kombucha maybe helps. Different flavors mm. of kombucha, maybe. Yeah. I like that brand that the hum they make. Yeah, yeah and I really like this. Uh, you had them out in Colorado too. Yeah, uh, it's a, uh, it's not here near me, but it's in Colorado Springs at a place called Mountain Mama, and you got me thinking about going up there to get a few bottles. There's uh, like a honey ginger one, beautiful, so good. Oh, I haven't had that one. But they makes make my throat the feel big so nice. bottles too. Have you seen the big bottles? Safely I don't fuck, is the really big. Bottles. I get drunk if I drink too much kombucha, so I don't drink alcohol at all. My body doesn't like alcohol. Uh, I get wasted easily, so I got to stay away from too much kombucha. So I just just go to the light ones. It's real did dark you know, and real flavorful. I'm wasted. Did you actually know there are some that actually have the alcohol content where you get carded now? Yeah, yeah. That GT's dark yeah, and rich one. That I thing is so that. good. I can only drink like the the top layer of it, and then I'm like, okay, my lips are feeling weird. It and it makes me remember my bad alcohol days, so I have to get away from it. It's yeah. hitting those neurons in your brain. Yeah. And it makes me think I could just drink this whole thing and nobody's going to say you've had too much to drink because it's kombucha. And I, like I drink kombucha. It's not beer. And I, my brain was like rationalizing. And I was like, nope, put it away. That's as soon as when you, when you start going that path, you're already down that, that road. You gotta you're like, ah, steer else. this car back. Yeah. 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 No, thank you. Let's go smoke some dabs. Yes. I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I don't drink at all. I haven't drank in probably like six, seven years. It's been a long time. So I'm right there with you, dude. Dabs and bud only. Yeah. I'm actually, honestly, I'm more of a flower guy than anything. So why don't we, uh, why don't we take a dab Cheers. or smoke some flour? Yeah. Cheers. We haven't to, done that in a minute. Q&R, what's, your, what's your thing? What's your cotton mouth thing? I, I'm embarrassed to say I don't really get cotton mouth. I don't know. I, I just drink wow. water, I guess. I don't know. Like, I do get cotton mouth, but then I'll just drink water and then it's gone. You know what I mean? So I, Sometimes I, I embrace I it. Answer. Like, if it's a good, like, this garlicky flavored concentrate, I'll just be like, I get it, yeah. I'd really love a drink, but God, this is so good. No, oh, man. You just, yeah. That's funny. How about Some, bear? Yeah, I'm lame, I guess. I just drink water. So if I have a kombucha, I'll, I'll grab that. But, you know, I'm pretty much strictly water. And even that, when I'm get, going through most of the day, I'll forget that all day until the end of the day. And I'll be watering the plants, and I'll be like, "Oh, oh, I, I need, need to, to water, water myself." <laughs> you hear it? Splash, splash, splash! And your body goes, "Hey, buddy, um, that sounds really nice over there." This tea's gonna do good. I, I'll just drink some of that. Oh, yeah, you'd be all <laughs> microbiotic and shit. Well, speaking of teas and microbiotic, um, I got some Frass Valley in the mail today. So you guys remember him from a couple yeah. episodes back? Yeah, I got uh, a pound of his product in the mail today. And it's got a, a couple different things you can do with it. I was reading on the label. And one of them is you can make a one hour tea with it. Like literally just, you know, two tablespoons in a gallon and bubble it for an hour and then strain it off. And you can, you know, um, foliar it or you can uh, root drench with it. So I chose to uh, root drench it and, you know, you can we'll see what happens. For what it's for what it's, I'm not going to argue with that dude because I think he's legit. I think that product's legit, but I think you can do that with any good quality compost or vermicompost. It's just a compost wash. It's not really a tea. It's just a compost wash. It works great. It works fine. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. 
especially like a lot of folks don't know how to get into compost tea. I think that's probably one of the most common questions. That was my common question. Like, how do I start doing this right without fucking it up? I was paranoid about like making anaerobic teas. So I waited way too long probably to really start brewing my teas. I could have just gotten, for example, a five gallon bucket, a handful of really good compost, thrown it in like magic into the com- into the bucket, stirred it around and waited a half hour, stirred again a couple more times and then either strained it off or just poured it on my plant. So that's a nice compost wash. And basically you get most of the benefits. All you're doing is just not multiplying the, the, the organisms. That's all. Does that make any sense? Yeah, absolutely. You're I just, think it's a great idea. You're just not giving them time to multiply. You're not giving, you're are not even really giving a big amount of food either. Well, I mean, you're still, you're still spreading the microbiology basically. You're still ending up, you're still probably multiplying quite a few because I mean they're bacteria. Okay, they multiply so in I have second, a question. You know? You're you're saying that they all multiply. Do you actually look at a scope and look and see? That I don't have a multiplying? microscope. No, no. Because no, okay, we, so this is a huge argument that takes place at the regenerative conference, and there's going to be some big arguments coming up in the, this year. I can see it already. They're actually going to get all the people together that kind of semi butt heads like Elaine and Chris Trump they kind of butt heads a little bit on things and that's kind of the like a big talk about some people say bubble it some people don't say and then they're saying you really need to look at mics and you really like need to look under a microscope if you really are talking with true tease and so I like I just feel like there's so many big conversations on tea it's such a like I think it's it's too hard to generalize it. I think it needs to go more into what you're. It what isn't. It you're isn't hard to generalize now. it. When you when you're an expert in any field, it becomes extremely simple to always distill the pyramid of knowledge into an ever smaller and smaller and smaller slice of the pie. That does uh, of different things. First of all, life is complex. It, it, it's really interesting. It's interesting to dig into something, but also makes people experts. I don't think the people in the chat that want to get into organic growing have to buy a microscope and learn how to scan for microbiology to learn how. I don't think that process is necessary. The people that want to write the recipes in the books that then sell the, you know, the people in our chat, if they want to sell those books, yeah, they should have microscopes for sure. I agree with you. But the folks in the chat, they can make simple compost teas. I don't think it's that hard. People have been doing it for hundreds of years. Or compost washes. People have been doing it for hundreds yeah. of years. And all those folks at the conferences, they're on some... I'm not arguing <laughs> with you, by the way, Tara. I'm just saying, like... No, no, they, no. It's a good they're point. They're all great no, farmers. Like, yeah. And they're just all trying to make their grows better. You know, and so Absolutely. The point is like, yeah, 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 yeah. The reality yep. is that Chris Trump yep. over here doing something totally different than... I'm just naming random names, right? Uh, versus Elaine Ingham. She's not really making teas these days, probably. But you know what I mean? Like... They're making totally different things, but they work. They're hopefully together going to find something better. But our chat is only going to benefit from that in the, in the long term. But they don't have to go out and buy a microscope. You know what I mean? No, uh, I was just curious if you, I was curious if you had looked at one. I was just asking if you, I haven't. I've I don't looked through have them. One. Yeah, yeah. And I've looked through I them, but I don't them. have They're them myself either. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was actually looking into them. I, yeah, they really kind of interest me. And I, I definitely will be looking at one at the, the conference this year. A couple of people in the chat have said that they've, I don't want to put them on blast or anything, but a couple of people in chat have said that they've had microscopes. It's probably awesome. super useful for sure. I mean, it, well, and it's a whole hobby too, right? Man, it's crazy what they're showing and trying to show last year. I was so overwhelmed with the knowledge that like it just went in one ear and out the other because I felt at that point it was full. <laughs> And now this year, now that the mic, they're going to be there and and I get to talk to the bug lady and, and really get to see, I'm like, and I am going to be at that mic that going to be looking under this shit this year. I'm really going to do it a lot more this year. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh, by the way, um, Josh is, uh, he's going to offer a online, uh, sale for all conferences i'm gonna try and be there and do a live for all conferences and so a ticket sale for online will be for all conferences this year and last year it was for only one part of the conference so i just wanted to put that out for people if they're considering it all i think there's also if people buy tickets early he's gonna uh, offer an online court you'll be able to do all the online as well it'll come with your one ticket so that's something else I just wanted to put out there. If anybody was into the region or if they're looking at that, I don't know who's all into that or not here. Well, so. and here, I'll put a little hot tip out for anybody. If you can actually make it to the regenerative conference, if you can, it's not, it's not critical, but if you can bring some of your beans, 
because I can promise you, you'll walk out of that um, conference with so many beans from different people, what they're growing, they'll tell you about it. They'll, they'll show you what they've been working on. They'll give you beans to bring home and try. You can literally leave there with genetics that people have been working on for, you know, a combined, you know, I, I wouldn't even want to guess, but lots. Now, will it have names on it? Uh, maybe, but it's just a really great time to go there and just trade beans with people that have like minds. So just FYI, you'll get lots of beans, but if you got them to bring, people will appreciate them. And that's Stoney's hot tip tip. Hot tips from Stony. Yeah, Apparently, the banger's not the only thing hot over there with Stony. Oh. oh. What's hot with Stony? Stony's hot tips. His the... tips. Just the tip. Just the tip. It's the only thing that I warranty. How was your anniversary, buddy? Uh, it, it, uh, well, I didn't get in no trouble. So Perfect. you win. <laughs> that was you a win. good answer. I like that. <laughs> you win. I'll get to have another one. I know for a fact I bought my card before she bought hers, so I'm feeling pretty good. Good job. Let's not talk too much about that because then you will get in trouble. Uh, she's oh. not watching TV. Hopefully, hopefully she's not uh, ear hustling on me, but it does happen from time to time. Ear hustling. I like that phrase. Yeah. Uh, that's a freebie from Stony too. Ear hustler, somebody that surreptitiously eavesdrops and pretends like they're not doing it. Ear Freebies hustler. from Stony. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be your section of the show every episode. You're like, and now it's time for Stony's hot tips. 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 Don't put me under all this pressure now. Oh, I don't even have a camera, Jesus. You created this pressure, bro. This is all you. Oh, shit. We got a new guy. His nipples are all Stoney's hard. He's wearing a tight yes. shirt. It's oh. noisy Dave. Dave, my friend. How are you? Dave's got Joe Rogan nipples. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, the aliens and the DMT are going to solve all of your problems, man. He said Dave's got Joe Rogan nipples. <laughs> oh, I'm good. Y'all just making fun of my nipples over here. Yo, it's oh it's okay. You you wear them proudly. I it's I am highly of, jealous. It's Empire one of my more appealing features. You jumped in at just the right time. We needed some comic relief. <laughs> you know. The big Kush was asking for another dab time bell. Really don't try oh, that. Guys, what the fuck? Well, I don't have a dab time bell, but dude, I'm already hitting it, man. Let's I got go. a lighter and a, a bomb. There we go. How was that? You hear that? You tapping your horn? No, it's like a lamp. Yeah, uh, dude, you need to just blow into it. Blow your horn, man. Come on, blow your horn. You know, you know you want to. You know you do. You know you want to. So, what's up, guys? Or what's up, uh, the Empire Dave? How's your <laughs> oh, harvest coming? Good. Um, we've got here in Colorado. We got pretty much all of our acreage down. We got it down, almost all of it down before the storm that passed through last week. Um, hey, we Dave, have... tell tell people how big an acreage you got. People might not know that. Some, there's oh, might geez. be people in chat. Uh, well, in Colorado, we've got just over 400 acres spread across three different locations. Um, in Wisconsin, we have um, 85 acres in Wisconsin. In Kansas, we have another 100 acres. In Alabama, we did uh, 60 <laughs> acres for the first time. This, this is the first year that they did a hemp research program. And then in Arkansas, on the banks of the Mississippi River, we have 320 acres. So... It's a lot of acreage, and I'm flying out to Wisconsin tomorrow to oversee our uh, processing of our Wisconsin material. What so. what part are you flying out to? I'll be flying into Minneapolis, St. Paul, and then our farm is in Eau Claire, which is about a 45 minute to an hour drive just east in in Wisconsin. So nice, nice. Yeah, it's, it's because Dude, I've been really... you got shit going on. Holy cow! Yeah, it's, don't call it's the Empire a, it's a, Dave for nothing. Yeah, yeah I was about to say the same thing. Oh, yeah. Empire, Empire, Empire. 
<laughs> no, it's it's fun. It's crunch time right now. Everyone's pulling down. Um, it's it's nuts. It's just absolutely crazy. So is it is it gonna have a song? Was the race to the market? Mendo Mendo dope song here pretty soon. I'm 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 sorry. Someone called me, and I'm on my phone, so I couldn't we couldn't hear you guys. Who who asked what? Go ahead, go ahead, Kim Rock. Oh, I was going to say, how's like the race to the market? Because like you said, everyone's the same thing in Oregon. Everyone's frantically pulling down, and they know that the prices are going to drop soon. So how is that? Like, does it matter? Do you think like one day, two days, three days? Is that going to make a difference? Uh, well, I mean, a lot of the market's already on futured contracts, so mm. materials already been paid for. Um, and, and it's secured to the buyer. So they're just waiting for it to be down and to meet the QC requirements to, for pickup and processing. So a vast majority of the acreage is already paid for. The, the acreage that isn't paid for is going to have a difficult time um, just competing with everybody. It, we see this every year, uh, this time of the year, even in the underground market, you know, the pounds just kind of, they go for a little less because it's just a saturated market. Um, uh, depending on what most farmers want to do, they'll wind up processing it into some constituent. Most of, most of the time it's crude. And then they'll just sit on that crude until May, June, July, August, when there's a lot less material on the market and the valuations go up a bit. So it's, it's, it's like a commodity. They treat it, you have to treat it like a commodity. So, but yeah. This year, there's a lot. There's this, you know, every year is the most we've ever grown, right? This year is the most. The next year will be the most. And 2021 will be the most. So, you know, you just have to anticipate those market fluxes with having all that material available within, you know, a six to eight week period. I think that makes me happier than anything else that you could have said is that there are people that are trading commodities, futures. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, that, that, the, that's the kind of genie you can't put back in the lamp. There's no undoing this. When people start trading futures on things, I mean, good luck trying to put that back in the box. But it's, I, mean, I don't know. I think they actually had like cocaine and heroin futures back in the day. So I don't know if they were legal <laughs> in America, but <laughs> well, yeah. But technically, if you have the right licenses, you can buy both cocaine and heroin. So yeah, that you just have to. Sense. Yeah, you just have to have the right license. You have it right there. We, just, we need yeah. to talk to Stoney more for our parties. <laughs> <laughs> no, I the mean, where, where though, do you think that they're making all of these pharmaceutical opiates? Those, those come from poppies for the most part. Uh, it's just processed. Same thing with uh, cocaine. They use cocaine in uh, like nose jobs. It's a great uh, vasoconstrictor. So ENT doctors are very much... <laughs> What y'all don't know this shit? Oh, I it's used to like work cocaine in nose jobs. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, look, they they literally take what is the equivalent of miniature tampons, soak them with cocaine liquid, and stick them up somebody's nose prior to them doing an operation. It makes it to where the nasal passages will not bleed very much at all. Because oh God, could you imagine being on your like back and then getting the drips? And not being able to do anything about it. Those passages too. So <laughs> it suck. Purpose. It's an analgesic <laughs> and a vasoconstrictor. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that's some crazy shit. Sorry, I guess I have too much medical and chemistry background. But no, you're yeah, no. That's how that works. Tara Lee, did you have a question that you wanted to ask? Oh no, I was just joking. I said you're going to have your own Mendo song pretty soon with all the acreage you got going on. Yeah, it's with all that acreage though, I'm kind of broke. So there's <laughs> there's that. <laughs> oh that, damn it. Leverage yeah, out. All, a lot. So, so what already. what are so yeah, what are you doing with all? How's your process in it? Are you doing different with different stuff? Like tell us a little bit more, can you? Yeah, I'd be happy to if you guys don't mind. Um I would like to hear more. How about you guys? Okay. I'll take that. I'll take that as a yes. Uh, so some of our acreage is it has, obviously has performed better than others. So um, we're we're looking to take about thirty percent of all of our material and use that on the smokable market. Um, it's uh, seems to be the hot thing this year. So we're gonna try and 
see what, what we can do. The rest of it's going to go all to processing and that'll get processed into crude oil. And then from there, it'll get sold to various labs for um, distillation into distillates or, you know, going into isolates or further processing into whatever they need. So um, it's pretty straightforward. The, the logistical issue is the storage part and getting all the material matured and dried and ready and stored. Um, and then, you know, just getting it picked up. I mean, so many trucks a day can come and pick up from places. I mean, it's a lot of material and, and the trimming of the smokable. I mean, you know, we just bought a bunch of to the two fifteens and I'm going to try to buy a, the model, the commercial model M a couple of those, but the lead time on those is, six to eight weeks so i don't know we'll probably still be trimming when that's ready to be picked up and used so i don't know it's just it's a lot of material to process this year it's uh that's that's the biggest headache out of everything growing the plants is fun and easy and you're gonna gonna have to look into like mechanical trimming yeah well, yeah. So, like, we yeah. already have a couple of the Greenboro two fifteens. They can do like four to six an hour, six pounds an hour of dry material. They have a. They used to have the four twenty series, but they discontinued that last year. And now they have the commercial M, which can do closer to like ten to fifteen pounds an hour. I was told by the sales rep at the company that if you push it, you can get close to like twenty to twenty five an hour. So, I don't know. We'll see. Um, you know, it takes money to make money. So. But it's the hotness right now. Everyone wants them. So. We shall see. Dab time. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh. Read my mind. Bing bong. Dang. Dang. I'm right in the ears. Yeah, sorry about that. I'll move that back a little bit. That best I could do is a shot glass with my dab tool. <laughs> I do have I do have something funny to say though. Out of all of our acreages. And all of the different strains and different seeds that we purchased for testing and stuff, the two that performed the absolute best was the Trump two and Stormy Daniels. Okay. No irony there. Okay, no irony. So, there. Okay, so wait, they wait, all wait. look like mushrooms. I, I missed the first part. You said the best that My the son. best of everything that performed. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, out of everything that we've that we had pulled down so far and tested with the final testing from the states, um, out of all of it, the best that performed was the Trump two. And, and when you Stormy. say, well, how do you rate that when you're saying the best? What's the performance? How are you rating it? Uh, cannabinoid content and making it on the CBD, CBN, and CBGs, as well as being within state standards for a Delta nine. Um, and then just having the most weight per uh, per plant on average per acre. Very cool. Did you post those on your Instagram or somewhere? It'd be really cool to check that out. I know. I just honestly, I just haven't had time. Okay. No, I understand it. You got a lot of shit going on. I look forward to seeing that, though. I would love to read more about you, that. You'll see more see this weekend. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. No, no. We'll when you get site. around to it, I'd love to see it. That'd yeah, cool. for sure. I'm okay. gonna post a bunch this weekend. But nice. I just thought it was really funny that Stormy Daniels and the Trump with all that shit that they had to go through in real life, wound up being the two out of all, everything that we did that turned out to be like the, you know, the fuego. Yeah. yeah. I just thought that was funny. Cool. I don't Very know. Very cool. That is yeah. pretty, pretty funny. So someone in chat asked if it was industrial <laughs> hemp and, and it's, is it considered industrial hemp? Not really, right? Um, not, well, I mean, it depends on what yeah. definition yeah. you're using. <laughs> Yeah, you go ahead and explain it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so like the uh, the um, the 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 how do I put this without confusing people? Um, the interpretation of it's pretty loose. So like a lot of states have deferred to um, a statement that was put out by. Uh, the U- U.S. Department of Agriculture that states that hemp is classified as long it is classified as hemp as long as the delta nine dry weight percentage is less than 0.3 percent, 0.3 or less. Um, that's the United States Department of Agriculture's statement and definition. There are states that don't abide by that. 
um, they use more of an accumulative value. So delta eight, delta nine, um, it's, it, yeah, it's just, it's a loose interpretation. And, and because the feds aren't involved yet in, in the regulation of this commodity or this crop, however they want to classify it, it's left up to the states to classify it and how they dictate trade and commerce. Um, and each state is different. I, I think I've, I've mentioned this on past uh, episodes where, like, for example, North Carolina has, has their state standards at, pardon me, 0.3%, uh, Delta 9, whereas South Carolina just changed theirs to 1%. And then New Mexico has legislation that will most likely be passed this year. Um, that will change theirs to 3%. So each state is interpreting it differently. And it's not a requirement for them to interpret the Department of Agriculture's recommendation or statement as kind of the standard and way forward, that there's no requirement for that. So every state's different. And, and, and I think it'll be that right there, the fact that everybody is interpreting this differently, that's gonna force the feds to get involved and start regulating this more on a national scale. And we could be pretty close to that actually. So, I don't know. I, in cool. the farm bill, in the farm bill that uh, made the provision for hemp, isn't that federal? Uh, yeah, the farm bill, 2018 farm bill, basically said that it is it's left up to the state. Each state is required to put forth its rec- its requirements and and regulations. Um, but they are it, it, it's kind of how this. It's the same way how the Obama administration and subsequently the Trump administration have both put out letters or, you know, statements saying that like medical cannabis and recreational cannabis were hands off. We're just letting the states decide. It's kind of how the Department of Agriculture um, is treating this. It's, it's how a lot of legislative bodies are treating this. They're like, hey, we're just going to let the states figure this out and, you know, we'll come figure it. We'll come and mop up so to speak when the time is right it's Ooh, isn't that just gonna I be guess fun people figure shit out quick yeah i mean it's weird so like in wisconsin right the wisconsin law is 0.3 percent so that's pretty standard but they also have a, a one-tenth leniency rule which technically means if your material tests at you know 0.39 you could still go to market with it but yeah, but but they can also, isn't it? Okay, so I also heard that they're also testing um, the THCA and not the TH. They're actually testing the THC and not the THCA when it's Correct. actually live plant material. So they're kind of there's, like, there's a lot of that's huge. Genius. <laughs> way, yeah, there's a huge, like, that's just how some of people are getting. That's what I'm happens hearing. when people that don't know yeah. what that make the rules. They're just yeah, exactly. well, let's just test for this. Yeah, yeah. And, right ahead, I talked, well, I talked to our friend Eric Humidor, our friend Eric, he's, he was telling me about that, them getting away with that. And that's that was kind of how they're getting away with it. They're harvesting early and then they're only testing for the THC and not the THCA because when plant material is alive and not decarboxylized, it is THCA, right? So the, therefore not testable in the THC. Unfortunate- the unfortunate thing with the states, though, is that the manpower also is limiting their ability to get to these farms and do testing. In Colorado alone, they selected over 600 farms to randomly be tested. And guess how many guys they had to do that? One. Two. Well, here's wow. the thing. Well, I guess they had two. <laughs> Woo! Look, yeah. we, now, we now live in a reality where we have a Schedule One substance that has a permissible level in an agricultural product. That is paradoxical and can just not continue on its current course. It's going to have to be rectified. It's either Schedule 1 or it isn't. You can't, I mean, I don't know. It's ridiculous to be able to say, oh, this is an agricultural product. It has a permissible amount of a Schedule 1 drug. Have fun. Eh, Whatever. (laughs) Well... It'll be interesting to see who, which 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 agency winds up actually having a lot of juris- most of the jurisdiction over how this industry operates. I have a feeling, and I've been saying this for a while, and a lot of people think I'm I'm wrong. Maybe I am, but 
everyone seems to think that the DEA is going to wind up regulating in most ways how the marketplace operates, which I think is just absurd because it doesn't make sense. No. Um, I happen to think that the uh, uh, the ATF, BATFE, is going to wind up moderating how it's grown, cultivated, and taken to market because they're to do that with tobacco. And it just seems more up their alley. Because I don't know if any of you guys have experience in the tobacco industry, but it's heavily regulated by that agency predominantly. Well, so. if it's not something along those lines. Well, that's what... DA. Okay, so here, right, they did away with our alcohol system, and that's who regulates ours, right? So, you know, I, I thought, I think they saw it coming in Washington State. That's, they did away with the alcohol stores. They let the, the, uh, the them go into Costco and then go into uh, all our grocery stores. Therefore, it freed up the agency to now take care of all of our medical marijuana people and all of the licensing and all that. That's who oversees ours. Interesting subject though, because in Washington they did like punitive taxation. So they're like, okay, yeah, we'll sell your, we'll, we'll let you sell your garbage at Costco, but you're going to pay for it. And so the tax on it is as mm -hmm. much as the bottle is. So for example, I always use, you know, I used to shop down in, in uh, Costco. You can buy a bottle of vodka in Costco in California for $15 in Washington. It's 40. And the only difference is the taxes they threw on there, which were more, you know, they didn't have that particular bottle maybe, but something similar in the store before was like 30. So Washington was like, here's some taxes for your bullshit. And so that's what people worry about with cannabis is it's going to be, okay, here's your taxes for your bullshit weed. And guess well, what it is but, here in Washington? We but pay already... 34% tax on top yeah. of our medical card. Well, well, we only get... For medical, we get 10% off. We're paying 34% tax. That's crazy. I mean, to think that they're taxing your medical card. I mean, in Colorado, yeah. because we still have the medical and the recreational side, you can go if you have a medical card and get it basically tax. You pay like almost nothing in tax on the medical stuff. Do you when know, you go to the you rec side, it's like 35.5% tax. Do you know that Washington calls it a sin tax? That's what it originally was, a syntax. And that's what it was on huh. alcohol. And then they continued it on to the now medical marijuana. And now we only get 10% off. If we go into store, we get 10, the sales tax basically is what we get off. And they, we still have to pay 34% tax to our state. You know, when a lot of times stuff like this, you think, okay, we're, we're going to solve this problem. We're going to solve that problem. We're going to solve that problem. What you're doing is you're basically whack-a-mole. You know, you're essentially solving problems as they come up with kind of cultural misperception. I think we still have to play whack-a-mole. I mean, that's just reality of life, right? But because, uh, you know, people in Washington, a lot of them can't home grow, et cetera, et cetera. That has to be another mole that gets whacked. But honestly, we have to change the culture from back around. We have to show people it's not a sin. You know, I don't care what you think about heroin or cocaine or any other goddamn thing. Those are separate things. You can have opinions about multiple things that are contradictory opinions. Here's weed and here's weed culture. And none of that shit applies. And it's not a sin, you know, and we can basically just little by little show that. And I think that will help gradually with those kind of bullshit seizures from sheriffs and whatever else. You know what I mean? I don't know. Oh, dude, you, you hit that on the head, man. I mean, Washington stance in particular, ever since they opened the doors with the 502 market, has been completely reactionary. Everything they've done has been reactionary. All the regulations they've put in place. And it's just it's kind of... Honestly, the market I, think, up there. I think it honestly, it's been like, I don't think they thought it was going to pass when it did. I really think they thought they were going to have another year and they went, oh, fuck, it passed. And like, they really, went, it was just, it was constantly like this, like once it took off, like they just have never got a hold of it and they still can't get a hold of it. They're still, like he's saying, they're reacting, reacting, reacting to shit. They don't even know what they're reacting to. I can tell you firsthand that the, the the way that they handled the rollout of the 502 was so bad. It, it, it killed a tertiary marketplace. The hydro industry in Washington state is gone. In 2015, there was like 140 plus stores spread across the, the West Coast and up, up out in Spokane, a couple dotted in between. And then within, I would say, 24 to 18, 18 to 24 months of 502 coming online, they were down to like 60 shops. It killed the hydro scene, like 100%. It was sad to see it. I mean, it was, 
there were big uh, grows opening up and beautiful bud getting grown left and right. It was cool to see that. But then on the back end, man, it's like I was seeing my friends from the industry struggle and close up shop and like, oh, it was devastating. It was absolutely devastating. Well, I mean, wasn't there, a lot of that was like huge investors thinking they were going to get the money back because they weren't allowed. A lot of guys didn't have the money up front, right? So people were um, investing in this stuff. And well, they, they were, wasn't the return on investment kind of a little too high at one point? No, no the, what really killed the hydro scene in Washington was the fact that the state gave the 502s reseller permits, <clears throat> which basically means you're a wholesaler and you can go to any manufacturer with the wholesale license or re re the resale permit and get wholesale pricing and not pay tax on it because the idea is it's a wholesale item and... It, yeah, I mean, I, I would go to shops and they, you know, two, three hundred dollar days just had, had to take a, had to take fluorescent light bulbs out of their fixtures. So they weren't running that much power, you know, it was, doing, it was just ridiculous. And then you'd go to the grows and you'd see them just stocked up on all this stuff. I'm like, oh, well, you know, where do you shop at? They're like, oh, we just get it direct from sunlight. And I'm like, oh, makes sense. Well, so basically it was the manufacturers that are willing to deal with the people direct and, and, and they cut out the middleman, which is what yeah, but everybody's that's, doing. That's what Amazon but that's business. does. So, but, yeah. but that's with business. Amazon. You, give, you, give, you, have, you, you give a maturing marketplace uh, and operators within that marketplace an opportunity to circumvent each other, and they will. It happens in any industry, and that's exactly what happened. They went okay. straight to the manufacturers. Yep. And they started getting all this direct pricing, cutting out the hydro shops. Yep. And, you know, in some some cases, yeah. those shops, that was 70% of their business. 100%. And that's Amazon's killing local. Like that's, I mean, you really want to look at it? I mean, look at who bought, who, I shop at Amazon. I'm sorry. I'm guilty. We never had a hydro store here. Okay. So. Yeah. But look, it, to me, it sounds a lot like if you were allegedly 20 years old and you were thinking, man, I wish I could get my weed for cheaper. I wonder where my dealer buys his weed. Let me cut that middle man out. You start getting it straight from the horse's mouth, paying a lot better price. I mean, or you just start you, growing it yourself. The free market, yeah. the same thing happens. Well, I run commercial facilities and it's cheaper for me to get it from the, the vendor or the maker than to go through a store because I order more than the store can even house. Yep. They can't even hold my order in their warehouse. I need it just shipped from a warehouse to a warehouse on a truck. I don't want to pay shipping twice because the, the grocery store will knock it up 20%. They also knock up shipping 20%. They yep. act like I don't notice it, but they do. They charge me again oh, for yeah. shipping. And yeah, so I just avoid all those costs by going straight to Veg Bloom and New Millennium and whoever else and just ask them, hey, can we work something out? I want a hundred gallons of this every month. And they go, a oh, hundred gallons? Yeah, we'll, we'll get you covered. And then I, don't, I get a pallet instead of having to go to the store and get a pallet. They went to the store, then to me, just saves me time. I mean, Jeff, you hit it on the head. I do the same thing in this business. I found a manufacturer in China that makes 315 watt LEC fixtures and I just buy them directly from them and I pay the duties when they hit the dock in California and they go to right directly to my customers. It's, it's the, just the easiest and most cost effective way if you're trying to like do business and make money. And I don't really even make money on the lights because the fucking lights dude, but yeah, they build the facility, run those lights and you consult on the facility. It becomes a relationship. They're going, it works. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I might need this a industry, little bit, but it's not much. Every penny counts right now. The cost of cannabis, and then we just had an outdoor crop near us fail and lose a lot of product, millions of dollars worth of product. They're going to have to fire people. They're going to have to let people go. They're, some of the owners may not get to buy a new Porsche this year. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like every penny counts right now. It's tough, so, dude. Saving it's every tough. dollar. Yeah, it is tough. And I, and I feel for you because like I used to be, before I started this business two years ago, I used to be on the supply side, right? So I was the guy going fucking shop to shop, you know, fucking grow to grow, peddling my shit. Like, yo, dude, like I got it. I get it up from the sales side. Um, and I, I, and I distinctly remember feeling jaded sometimes because, you know, it's like the, the circumventing just, it kills business. It kills sales. It was killing my sales, even though I was selling directly to grows, it was killing my retail shops, which was a substantial part of my revenue streams at the time. And, 
you know, it's just, it's, it was just it's frustrating. But now that I own a business, I totally get it. I completely understand. And I'm like, I, you know, I, hindsight, in hindsight, everything's 2020. And I totally get it now. And I just, and I feel bad. Yeah. Cause it's just like, uh, but it's, that's the part of being a business owner and making the right decisions for the business. Especially when you have people that depend on you to make payroll. And they're paying, they're paying their rent and their bills on your decisions. That's right, dude. Yeah. That's like, whew, holy cow. What a responsibility. Fuck. Whew. You can, you can wear different hats in life. I think that's another fascinating part of this weird life that we live. Like you can be, for example, a landlord and a tenant at the same time. So you can basically have essentially power over somebody, but someone can have power over you. And that's not an unusual circumstance. You might be selling your old house, buying a new one, and you're stuck between residences. You know, that, that shit happens all the time. And yet it affects people's lives in weird ways and they have to adapt. Or you so have you a rental adapt, property, you get lost. but you also have a house with a mortgage. So, right. <laughs> so bank, you're stuck, but you're stuck, over but you, you're, you know, you're over right? somebody else. <laughs> yeah. so. Seeds here now decided they hated me. I would have to readjust. <laughs> adapt, overcome, improvise. Yeah. Or, did I say that right? Adapt, improvise. I don't know how that, which order it goes. Overcome. It sounded really good to me. Just fucking <laughs> conquer. That's the point. Destroy conquer. it all. That's the uh, fourth one that they note. don't tell Here's you is conquer. <laughs> a little bit of a brighter note. Hey, yes, Dan. What? Dan, can you see if I didn't block someone earlier? You blocked someone? No, like I, I clicked on something and I was trying to comment and then it clicked okay and I didn't maybe I just approved something to go through. I don't know. Can you just make can you like see that? I don't know if you can tell. No, they all see the drop on the man okay. hammer. I'm like, God, hopefully I didn't block because I just saw it say something like I think it was because someone, you know, because every now and then you have to approve things because people say certain words. Yeah. Like oh. maybe that's just what I hit. I hope. Oh, I didn't block anybody out there. What the fuck? I did. Well, if you did, they can't talk. Now you're really it's showing us your nipples. What the hell? Oh, dude, I think uh, my wife must have really worn this shirt. He really is showing his nipples. I, no, I think my wife must have worn this shirt. He she's... upgraded to Matthew McConaughey nipples. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Hamster oh, nipples. My. Dab time, exactly. Dab time. Ding, ding, ding. I'm trying to scroll through the comments. Any... So many. I don't see anything that would have been offensive. Go ahead. I interrupted somebody. I apologize. I was curious if anybody had any lessons for the year. You know, obviously, indoor growers, outdoor growers are kind of different. Indoor growers are always kind of plodded along. But, you know, we still have our struggles. We have our heat struggles and whatever else. Like, did anyone uh, learn anything or is there something to absorb for next year? Because I always feel like uh, mistakes are one of the best ways to learn, frankly. They're painful in the moment, but if you can figure out why it happened and figure out how not to make it in the future, it, it's the easiest way to grow. Ooh, ooh, let me go first. I definitely learned something. <laughs> so here's my lesson for the year. When you have juvenile males, do not try to guess how long they can wait before blowing their load. <laughs> because they're more than likely they're like juvenile males. Yeah. Yeah. As you get older, Sploosh. you may forget. Is that a breeze? Like. But yeah, <laughs> so yeah don't, don't don't think those juvenile males can hold that load for a while. Just nah. get them the fuck out. And yeah, they're gonna go. I mean, they can get off with you just walking by them. Yeah, well, they can go from barely showing male traits to fully formed sacks in like three days. I swear, mm. like it's ridiculous. And then twelve hours from that, pollination. Yeah, then yeah, yeah. you'll see those sacks, and they'll just open up. They're like, yeah, got yep. to go, bro. That she, shit happens. <clears throat> she, get them she out of there. Funny on me. In, coach. Do you guys have the sacks open up in uh, vegetative cycles all the time, or is that mostly in flower? Like, Only for in example, flower. Jeff, do you? I, if I see it in veg, I get rid of that plant. That's yeah, that goes <clears throat> that goes bye bye. No, that's uh, that's an that's that yeah, that's not good. Yeah, that's not something we want. Don't be pulling your pants. That would be something that would perm out, right? That would be something that would probably be light stress prone or something in the uh, progeny, right? Auto flower, that, auto yeah, flower. Yeah, it'll auto. get root bound or it'll start flowering on you, or it'll just auto flower if it doesn't get enough light. It's got something in there that shows me that it doesn't have to get a twelve twelve to flower out. Yeah. 
Although, do you think auto flowers are more of the future or do you think that uh, conventional or feminized plants are going to be the future more? Uh, all of the above. Something just went weird. Oh, my iPad's going to die. Battery low. I saw everything flicker. I was like, what just happened? I got a text and my battery died at the same time. That was fucking weird. Uh, all of the above. The fem seeds yeah. always have a market. Reg seeds are always going to have a market. Auto flowers are going to have a spot. I know plenty of growers that uh, have beef against all of them. So that makes all of them have a market. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, some some photo period growers have mad beef against auto flowers for some reason. Uh, just when you say autos, they're like, fuck auto. It's the first thing they type. It's just like Tourette's. Uh, and then some people hate fem seeds. Some people will testify on a Bible that fem seeds are hermaphrodites all the time. They, and they have no nothing to base that on, but they are. That's what they claim. So some people, it's there's true. always going to be those haters. Would you hate a screwdriver or would you hate a hammer or would you hate, I don't know, right. my metaphor, like all those things are different tools to accomplish exactly. ganja. You're trying to get, you're basically a ganja farmer. You're a trichome head farmer who gives a shit on some level how you get there. You eventually <clears> farm <throat> off some trichome heads and maybe you slough them off in the hash or whatever the case may be. I don't know. I don't think it matters too much. There's, it's like music. If you can dance to it, let's fucking get down. Some people like different stuff. You might want to scream and yell. You might want to fucking dance like Shakira. It's all music. We all can all enjoy it some way. Let's not be dicks I, about it. I 100% agree with you. And there's a place for everything. And I agree that there's a place for people that want to grow with chemicals in their garden. I'm okay with it. I don't care. Like, see, really, I'm I'm like, I think there's a place for everybody. And that's I mean, we how we learn. Them, oh, I mean, please that's, do. That's, we've got to learn by that, right? Yeah. Like, everybody's going to have their own thing. If not, we would all be Dream eating milkshake. fucking drinking vanilla milkshakes and eating vanilla ice cream and fucking sitting at hard tables. Nobody would be in it. We wouldn't have a goddamn MacBook to have this show on if we all did the same shit. We'd all be table makers. There'd be a bunch of tables everywhere. We wouldn't have any walls. We wouldn't have roofs. There'd be tables all over the place or a bunch of fucking pottery. Everybody would be a goddamn pot maker. We'd have a shit ton of pots and nothing to eat out of it because everybody would be the same person. <laughs> Be wouldn't that though. suck if wouldn't we were that all pots, suck? there would be nobody there, to call there'd black. be no walls it'd be just a bunch of fucking tables oh it's <laughs> just that my table wall makers, maker. or yeah, we would have just a bunch wall of walls and no and fucking shit. tables <laughs> chairs and no tables a bunch yeah, of house bro. makers yeah, yeah we, need, we need some of everybody that's what i'm saying if, if we need bakers we need weed growers we need artists we need yeah that's everybody great. i love that that was great that was a great analogy <laughs> Well, there's so many people that are going to be entering the market as recreational or medical cannabis consumers over the next decade that, you know, people are going to find their little niche, just like some people like to cook barbecue only on charcoal. And some people just like the convenience of propane. People are going to find what interests them. I think the markets will be there for everything. It'll just be, you know, the demand might be skewed one way or the other. But everybody's going to have a place at the table, I think, as long as long as they have something quality that they're putting forth. Well, yeah. And even beyond that a little bit, it's kind of like at the end of the day, does the consumer really care if it was a auto or a femme or a regular? Like, oh, I mean, I was talking about people that are growing, like, oh, that like too. That too. people that are coming into the market and they are curious about having a home grow. Some people are going to want to grow autos. Some people are going to grow fem. Some people That's are going to grow grapes. You know, some people are growing cocoa yeah. and some are growing soil because yep. you know it'll be whatever tickles their fancy. And sometimes wherever you start isn't where you finish. So it's true. I bet all of our mamas bake cookies differently, but we all have delicious fucking cookies at the end. They're all the best. Yeah, what yep. makes the best? Well, I don't yeah. know. Not unless they all go to the store and get the frozen ones. And they're all the that's same cookie, mom, right? Still, but if that's what your mom does, bro, it's still the best cookies I mean, your mom can make. Yeah, I'm not gonna judge you if that's what your mom gave you as a child, but damn, but, bro, like that it probably explains a lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was Deep about down. to say I'd eat your mama's cookies, Dan, but I'm not so sure now. So that it always quickly. gets so weird right at the end of the show. I love it. Dave, yeah. what is it's Dave's fault. We'll blame it on well, him this time. Yeah, that's fine. You Dave showed up. Him. He showed us his nipples, and everybody started like getting weird. And... It's a grease stain from my, my wife's nipple butter because she's breastfeeding. <laughs> so you got some on your shirt. 
<laughs> he said uh, nipple butter. It's what it is, bro. And that seems like a really plausible explanation, and yet it seems. I don't really think that she would appreciate you let down on your that. shirt. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Maybe not the scapegoat you wanted to play. Nah. It's the truth, though. So, I mean, maybe Dave is a runner. Maybe he just doesn't want to admit that he has chafed nipples and now he's throwing his wife under the bus. That's good. I mean, you know, things can be different ways. Right? Isn't that what significant others are for, though? Like you throw them under the bus. I mean, I use her to get out of situations that I don't want to do all the fucking time. Maybe he's just got sweaty nipples. No, I don't have sweaty nipples. <laughs> sweaty nipples. I just think one of them. Don't sweat. One of them or no, sweats. maybe they do actually. Yeah, just one of them. Just, it's just the right one, guys. I really just want to start talking about growing weed again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was people thinking about grew, maybe just wrapping up the show soon. Hey, there you go. I was going to say, the people that grew auto flowers, if people grew outdoor regular seeds this year, they got one crop. They were able to fucking stretch it out. The people that grew auto flowers maybe got two crops in. They could have yeah. threw out an auto flower seed and pulled that early before the thieves got out, before the frost Indeed. got out. They could have grown a regular crop right behind that. They could have gotten two harvests. Well, all the people growing yeah. photo period plants only got one. So suck a fish. There's a reason. Dan, wrap it up. You look like you're ready to go. Yeah, dude, I'm getting tired over here. So <laughs> thanks again, everyone, for joining me this week on the Embracing Organics show. And thank you to our guests tonight, Tara Lee, Empire Dave. And thank you again to my awesome panelists. We will catch you all on the next one. Peace out, Girl Scout. Go buy a pack of auto.